I've had to do some very <laughs> strategic covering up of certain body parts for the thumbnail, but I think we have it. Hello everybody, it's Sylvie. Welcome or welcome back to Tarot Magpie. I hope you're doing all kinds of good. I am coming to you today with the first installment of the Top Tarot Trumps tag series um, that is being um, hosted, started, kicked off by Masha's Musings. Do I mean Masha's Musings or Musings by Masha? I will link her and her videos in the description of course but this has been going around. I'm very late to the party because I think everybody's up to the lovers now which is the seventh card in the major arcana and here I am with the fool but I wanted to jump on this and I'll tell you why it's taking me so long. Partly because I've been busy busy but mostly because I was really stumped on what my favourite fool cards were. Like I can instantly think of a handful of different cards that I would choose as my favourites for any of the other major arcana cards but for the fool I was, I was a little bit stumped so I did a proper route through my deck collection, see what I've got, see what resonates the most um, and pulled out some of my favourites. I believe that technically speaking we're supposed to choose five, I have six here because I'm a maximalist at heart. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to get straight into it. I'm going to tell you about the full cards that I've got and why I like them so much. First up, we have the Fool from the Herb Crafters Tarot, and this is uh, Dandelion. The Herb Crafters Tarot, if you're not familiar with it, features a different plant for each of the 78 tarot cards. And we have Dandelion for the Fool. And I love this one because the image of a dandelion, when you, when you know, when they've all blown and I've got all seedy and you make a wish on a dandelion and it's like dancing in the air that feels so perfect for the fool like that's such good fool energy in my opinion but also I like all the little details like we've got the little satchel which has a little white rose on it we've got a little butterfly which to my mind and I will show you why with one of the other cards in this video to my mind there should be a butterfly on the fool card and I truly at this point I don't know if there always is but it deserves to be on there. Yeah, this one honestly is pretty straightforward. I also just think it's totally beautiful. This whole deck is so beautiful. Um, and then the other reason that I really like this full card in particular is as part of the deck that it's in, we have this same layout of the stones and the central plant in the world card of this deck, which I did not think ahead and grab, and I'm, I'm not gonna do it now, but like it starts and ends with the same thing and the fool in the world like sitting slightly outside the cycle and they mirror each other and I think that's really lovely. So that is the fool card from the Herb Crafters which definitely one of the least conventional fools that I have to share with you today. It's you know a very abstract depiction of the fool but I like I like the symbols that we have and I think it's really lovely. So that's the Herb Crafters. Okay, next up, this is the Fool from the Witch Sister Tarot, which is brand new to my collection, more or less. But I just had to put this in here because like it felt like a bit of a cheat because it's new to me, but I, I felt like I had to because I love it so much. So part of the reason I like this Fool is because of the uh, the action, the tension, the, the movement or the readiness for movement that I think has been captured in this figure. Uh, I think the art in this whole deck is absolutely stunning and if you know me you know I'm not usually a fan of like portrait decks or decks with lots of people in them. But I think in this deck in particular there is something really special about the way she's kind of captured energy in these figures so I really like that. There's like a readiness which I think is very fool-like, like he's about to take that step off the cliff. There's a there's a readiness for action. This is definitely a little bit different from your average fool because we don't have a a dog pulling at them and you know suggesting caution we've got this hair here which is just as ready to leap as our figure is and that's a take it's not the most traditional but I really like it and I think that pause and that stillness and that kind of getting ready for the moment to leap and then the leap also is very much suggested with the hair I really enjoy it so that is 
my second fall. This is the Witch Sister Tarot. Like I say, this one is brand new to me. I haven't pulled this in a reading yet. This is purely based on imagery. So I kind of cheated by having six cards, but this one feels like a cheat because it's like a fun bonus extra because I haven't actually really worked with this deck yet. I love the um the, the hairs in the moon as well. Like it is just a truly beautiful, beautiful card. What's the word? It's not energy. It's like, or it is energy, but it's energy that's ready to be released. Like it's, um, Ooh, there's a word. There's a physics word for that, isn't there? Kind of like potential, but not. I don't remember. Okay, this is a very different take. <laughs> also, again, not a super traditional fool. This is the fool from the Tarot of Vampires. This is also a Llewellyn deck. These both are. The reason I like this fool so much, like once again, it's not a traditional fool image. We're not stepping off the cliff. But what I really like about this one is it is the idea of rebirth. You know, you are become a vampire you're reborn in a living dead kind of way but I think it's that element of the fool that isn't always obvious in the imagery is that it's not just the start of a fool's journey it's the start of a whole new cycle which implies a previous cycle so there's the rebirth aspect it's why I like the butterflies as well the butterflies are metamorphosis it's that kind of new life that rebirth and um it's just a very it's a very dramatic card there's a lot of openness and freedom which i think really represents the way the fool is so open to new experiences and learning what there is to be learned and we've got some details we've got the rose there we're kind of on the edge we've got the 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 arms is mirrored in the birds and the, the moonlight coming through kind of mimics the sun that we see in the traditional full card, but it's like on the other side, which I think works for this vampire deck. I just think it's really, I love this artwork. It's no secret that I love this artwork. I think it's really fabulous. There's also a lot of airiness and I really like the perspective in this card as well. We're looking up at the fool. And I also think that's a really nice take. Like this, for being such a visually dark and gloomy grungy card, I think it really does show off that kind of feeling of like freedom and possibility that I like in The Fool, but I think it's hard to depict. So it's really cool that this card has managed to not only depict it, but do so in this gothy vampire kind of style. Is that all I have to say about this card? I feel like I should be saying more and maybe I will say more when it comes to the other cards, but yeah, I struggled a little bit finding finding my favorite Fool cards. Okay, so next. This is the Fool from the Theodore Pavlov. This is the most traditional Fool out of the bunch that I've got to show you here today. And I like, I don't love a clown, but I do like the kind of jester spin on the Fool. And I also really like that we've got a mask here and that idea of different faces, maybe different selves or different facets of ourselves. I like thinking about that tied into the idea of a new journey or a new venture, but it's, you know, it's not the whole you. You don't completely start from scratch every time you are embodying the fool because you do carry all of your previous experiences with you, but you're maybe trying something new, you're putting something new on. Um, I also personally just really like that it's a cat instead of a dog because I love a cat. The art style is obviously gorgeous. And again, I like the, the similar to how this was so like open and expressive, which the fool usually isn't so much. This is kind of in motion and looks like a dancer. You know, it looks like she's having more fun with it, which again, I also really like, like there's a kind of I feel like that helps to get across the aspect of the fool that is like youthful, innocence, maybe also naivety and kind of because nothing bad has happened yet, you're just having a good time. There's nothing to be afraid of because you haven't had that experience to learn from yet. So I like this fool from the Fyodor Havlov. This is the fool from the Tarot of the Crystal World, which is one of my favorite decks and one of my absolute favorite decks from last year. And I like this, again, just for like there's a a sense of freedom and it's playfulness maybe the word I'm thinking of like we've got this kind of dancing going on we've got this fool not even clothed and you know what I think I quite like a naked fool the next one is also naked I had to very strategically cover them up when I was doing the thumbnail <laughs> um the dog is also naked everybody's got their dick out I think it was Laura also mentioned this fool in their version of this video so I'm trying to not just repeat everything that they said but if I kind of absorbed that and I'm just regurgitating it then you know please know it probably came from Laura so um yes I like this I like the sense of freedom I like the sense of kind of carelessness which when you look at like the smoking ruin behind them it's you know are they carefree because they're careless or are they carefree because they're ignorant or are they just moving on starting a new 
leaving whatever is behind them behind them. I like the perspective of this fool as well, the way that we can't see what's ahead of them, whereas usually we can see the edge of the cliff that they're about to step off. Here we, you know, it could be a cliff, it could be a road, it could be literally anything else. And that's not depicted. So I like the perspective in this card as well. I also like that it's not a super young person, which the others I've shown, okay, well, we have an immortal vampire, but everybody looks like they could be fairly young. And then we got the daffodils, daffodils, dandelions. Whereas this figure, I could believe that they are a bit older. They're not this isn't their first, this isn't their first rodeo, this isn't their first fool moment, this won't be their first fool's journey. And again, I think that indicates the, the cyclical nature of the Major Arcana quite nicely. So that is the Tarot of the Crystal World. And then finally, we have the Fool from the Mary L Tarot, which for better or worse, was my first actual physical tarot deck that I owned. Not sure I would recommend it, but it did kind of imprint upon me. And this is the card you see all the butterflies this is the card that first in my brain linked the fool with this idea of metamorphosis which i can never say out loud for some reason metamorphosis the fool is metamorphosis the fool is the butterfly his little his little butterfly shoes i love it's that idea of starting something new and i like this airiness the way it's like he's dancing in the air or is making or like there's a lot of motion i like a lot of motion in the fool that's what i've really realized and of course the fool is or at least i always I, I say of course but i'm sure that somebody else does it differently but i read the fool as like air elemental we're kind of dancing in the sky with these weird ribbons and like here we're dancing here it's very airy like it feels like when you're standing on top of a big hill or a mountain or a cliff which I wouldn't because I'm scared of heights, but you know, I'd be on top of a big hill um, and it feels very big and open and airy. And I think these three cards in particular really, really depict that in a way that I really like. But anyway, back to the Marielle. We've also got a mask on this fool, much like this fool who was holding up a mask. And then we've also got these two dragons, which I truly forget what the guidebook has to say about those. I don't remember why they're on here but I do like them. I also like that the mask also looks like these butterflies. Is it a monarch butterfly? But I like the motion that is added by these dragons in the background. I like, I think it's cool that there's two of them and so that brings in ideas of like, to me, and I'm purely just like riffing off the nonsense in my brain, but we've got the two dragons and that is presenting some kind of duality or binary and then the fool being zero and the fool sitting outside the normal structure, it's like you're going to be introduced to the structure, to the binaries and dichotomies that exist throughout the tarot and throughout, you know, the world that we've built. And he's kind of being caught up by them, but for the time being is still like naked and free and one with the butterflies. So I don't know if that means anything, but in terms of a vibe, it's something I like in this fool is... It's like an anticipation almost of of like maybe it's not the moment before he steps off the cliff but it's the moment before he steps into the real world with the kind of opposing realities that exist and the you know the binaries the dichotomies the dualities all of that uh, did that make any sense quite possibly not also you can tell he is very much in the air and i may only just be seeing this but i don't know if you can see here there's a cliff that he stepped off because there's this waterfall coming over the edge. I think that's what that is anyhow. Uh, so he's very much in the air. Very airy fool. Okay so that is my collection of fool cards for this first installment of the top top tarot trumps I think is the tag name but obviously it'll all be tagged and linked and what have you in the title and or description. But that's it. This felt messy. I've, I've never had less less confidence in what I'm saying or less idea of, of, of able to translate the mush that comes out of my brain into words clearly uh, so this felt like a struggle but hopefully they will get a little more coherent as we go on no promises but I'll try my best so these are my favorite fools I'm excited about the magician because I have I have a few magician cards that I really really love I'm excited about the rest of them I just felt weirdly stumped on the fool because I'm like the fool is everything the fool is nothing how the fuck do you depict that that isn't just a guy walking off a cliff but anyhow let me know what you think let me know what you think of these fools and I will see you in the next one Bye bye